It's funny because me and another tech YouTuber, Austin Evans, are both fans of the Razer Blade Stealth lineup. And we mentioned actually back in June on Twitter that it would be great to see one of these laptops with one of the newer GTX GPUs, like a 1650 or a 1660. And well, it seems Razer was listening. This is the new Razer Blade Self GTX 1650, and this Ultrabook, oddly enough, has the potential to be my new editing machine. Before we get into that though, let's first, as is the usual on this channel, give it the complete walkthrough treatment and go through every spec and feature that this little guy has to offer. The Blade Stealth lineup now comes in three models. We have two new black GTX 1650 models, one with a 4K touchscreen, which is the one I have here, and one with a 1080p matte non-touchscreen. Both these models have basically the same specs and they are the ones that we'll talk about the most here. But there is also a new Mercury white model that loses the GTX 1650 and uses an Intel integrated graphics instead in exchange for a higher voltage CPU. We'll discuss in a bit more detail why this is in a bit though. First, the GTX models are identical besides the screen changes I just mentioned, and that the 4K model is about one tenth of a pound heavier. Those screens though are a 13.3 inch 16 by nine display that support 100% of the sRGB color space and are individually calibrated by Razer at the factory. The chassis are made out of the CNC milled unibody design that in my opinion, gives the Blade laptops across all of their products a more premium feel that some of the other gaming laptops out there don't have. They also do all sport the same unmistakable three-headed snake logo on the back that, in keeping with the laptop's name, are tone-on-tone -tone etched into the lid instead of the 15 and 17 inch models RGB enabled ones. The GTX 1650 models in FHD and 4K weigh 3.13 pounds and 3.26 pounds respectively, making them both much lighter than my current five pound 15 inch razor blade OLED, of course. Moving the ROM device, we have a 720p webcam that can also be used for Windows Hello to unlock the computer. And here's what that webcam looks like and the microphones sound like. Beneath the screen, we have our RGB chroma enabled keyboard that unlike other Razer models, isn't a per key chroma, but instead the entire keyboard is a single unit that you can change the colors of. This keyboard is still really nice to type on for me and thankfully doesn't have the odd right side function key that the larger models do that would make you accidentally hit it when trying to hit the right arrow and the right arrow when you tried to tap down, etc. Under that, we have a large glass trackpad that is a Microsoft Precision trackpad, meaning that Windows handles the drivers instead of the individual trackpad manufacturers, so it's more precise and can use Windows gestures, which I appreciate. On either side of the keyboard, we have four speakers that are Dolby Atmos enabled, and they sound like this. This trident resides the power of Atlantis. For ports, we have a USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 2 port, a USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 2 port, and a 3.5 millimeter audio jack on the left. On the right, we have another USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 2 port and another USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 2 port that is also Thunderbolt 3 capable, so you can connect this to an eGPU to be able to use an even more powerful graphics card. See my video at the link below if you're curious about how that works. For the battery in the GTX 1650 models, we have a 54.1 watt hour battery, which in the non GTX 1650 model that I mentioned before, Razer claims to get 10 hours of battery life with, but they have yet to rate the 1650 model. Now I'll be doing my first ever real world test on a laptop on this laptop very soon. So if you guys are interested in that and seeing how the battery does actually last throughout an entire day, head over to the channel and subscribe and ding the bell next door, subscribe so that you get notified when that goes live. That battery though is paired with a whopping 100 watt power adapter that is at least still pretty compact. For connectivity, we have a Wi-Fi 6 802.11ax in other words. Stay tuned for a video on what that actually means by the way on the channel. And we have Bluetooth 5.0. Now let's dive into the thing that I'm the most interested in in this form factor of a laptop, the performance. Under the hood, we have the aforementioned NVIDIA GTX 1650 Max-Q GPU with four gigs of DDR5 VRAM in the two black models, while the white model has an Intel Iris Plus integrated GPU instead. Now, this GTX 1650 is the reason why Austin and I were so excited about this model that has to be one of the highest spec GPUs in a laptop of this size, period. This is paired with 16 gigs of fixed GDR4 RAM and the newest Intel quad core 10th gen i7 1065G7 processor. The GTX 1650 models have that processor running at about 15 watts, while the white model has it bumped up to running at 25 watts, giving the CPU a little more power. 
Now, the idea behind this, I was told, was that the white model is more focused at content creators than the black models, as certain photo editing apps, etc., are more CPU dependent than GPU dependent. This also explains the more Mac-esque color, I imagine. To me, though, as a video creator using Adobe running on the CUDA rendering engine, I care more about GPU, so that's why I'm more excited about these models than the creator model. Honestly, there seems to be a lot of controversy around video editing and whether a CPU or a GPU is more important. Uh, me and my friends have actually been talking about it for a very long time and none of us can agree. I plan to be doing a video on that soon though and actually trying to test that for real. So stay tuned for that. Now for storage, we have a 256 gig PCIe M.2 SSD for the white model and a 512 gig of the same type for the GTX 1650 models. Regardless though, both models allow the user to upgrade the storage on their own, which I'll do a quick video on this soon with a step-by-step -step tutorial if you're interested. Now real quick, here's me rendering a 4K video using Premiere Pro and the YouTube 1080p preset output and how long that took. And then here are some popular benchmark results for anyone who's interested in those. Thanks to Razer's no bloat policy, it runs Windows 10 and doesn't have any apps from Razer pre-installed like other manufacturers might do. We do, however, have some Microsoft added bloatware, but you can easily just right click it and uninstall whenever you want. The one app that is from Razer on here I don't consider bloatware, and it's called Synapse, and it allows you to customize the chroma as mentioned, but also create macros, adjust fan speed and performance settings, etc. It's actually kind of helpful. Now, the Razorblade Stealth 13 GTX 1650 model costs $17.99.99 for the FHD model and $19.99 for the 4K model. You can head to the link I put below for more info on both, as well as the slightly cheaper $14.99.99 Mercury White model that I mentioned too. There guys, complete walkthrough on the new Razorblade Stealth 13 GTX 1650 model. That's a long name, but there you go. Um, stay tuned again for the real world test. Also, if you like this video, please thumbs up it or share it. It's greatly appreciated. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought of it, of the laptop. Always love hearing from you guys. And as always, regardless, thanks for watching.